Welcome to the Merino Valley Writers Expo 2020. We're so glad that you can join us to support local authors and to celebrate the art of writing. As a reminder, please make sure that your microphones are muted and that your videos are turned off and uh, this will uh, minimize distractions for the presenter or presenters. If you have any questions for our presenters, please type them in the chat box and we will pass them on. If you need any tech help, ask Charmaine Mendez from the Moreno Valley Public Library and she will do her best to assist you. And now I'm going to introduce our guest speakers for this session. This is our final session, by the way. Uh, Johnny Bender is the president CEO of Inlandia Institute and a retired longtime journalist living in Reno Valley with his wife and two sons. He worked as an editor at the Press Enterprise since 2000, serving in a variety of roles, including Reno Valley Bureau Chief, Riverside Zone Editor, uh, Metro Editor, and Front Page Editor. He graduated from Cal Poly Pomona and is an avid poet. Bender is also co-founder of the Guerrilla Poetry Performance Troupe, Poets in Distress, which has been performing since 1982. Katie Porter is a poet, editor, essayist, arts administrator, wife, mother, daughter, friend, founder, and, and editor of Pomelion. An, exec an executive director of Inlandia Institute, the recipient of an MFA in poetry from Antioch University in Los Angeles. She is the author of nine poetry books and chapbooks, including most recently Slow Unraveling of Living Ghosts with Jerry Bender and illustrated by Steve Blue Lossing and The Body at a Loss. She now lives in Riverside where she's been sheltering in place since March 1920. Uh, Johnny and Katie are here today to talk about the poetry book they wrote together, Slow Unraveling of Ghosts. Welcome Johnny and Katie and thank you for being here. And I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank so you, you're Sharon. on. <laughs> great to be here. And thanks everyone for joining us. So uh, I, Jerry must be a new alter ego I have. Um, I'm Johnny Bender, and I'm happy to be here with Katie Porter. And we've got our new book that came out, Slow Unraveling of Living Ghosts, which is about the COVID pandemic. At the beginning of it, we started emailing back and forth poems, and uh, it became a conversation. Now, I've tried collaborations in the past, and this is the first one that's worked, and I think it's because uh, Katie realized uh, that we were working toward a publication and that we weren't just playing around. So I'm really happy with the way this came out. Katie, thank you. Thank you, Johnny. So um, early on in the pandemic, back in the early days when we really didn't know uh, what to expect, um, I did what I normally do when I'm, I'm unsure about things. And I wrote, and I wrote a poem, and I thought, uh, who else, who can I share this with? John um, and I both happen to be poets, and we both happen to be heavily involved with Inlandia Institute. And I thought, uh, I'll send it to him. And from there, John wrote a poem in response, and he sent it back. And we just kept going back and forth like that. Um, until pretty soon we had a couple dozen poems and I don't know what, at what point we decided um, illustrations would be good, but John has worked very closely with uh, Steve Lossing, who is with us today. And Steve is a fabulous artist and he's illustrated other books of John's. And we thought, you know, what, why not bring him in on this project too? Yeah, so, it came out really nicely. Uh, we'll tell you a little later how to get copies of this, but I think we should get right to the poems, Katie. Yes, I do too. Should we start with the cauldrons? Sure, wherever you want to start. Okay. A cauldron of COVID. Sniffle, snuffle, cough, and splutter. 
Sputum sprays and virus splatters. Spell number one. The bride weeps, lonely and dismayed. No flowers, no gown, no bridesmaids, no tux, no feast, no groomsmen. Her parents can't leave the house, and her wheezing groom can't travel. Markets empty, test kits lacking, sputum sprays and virus splatters. Spell two, the muses weep, housebound and gagged. No jazz, no big band, no Bach, no pop, no poems, no art, no film, no teepee. The taverns are closed, but the dispensaries are open. Fearful, doubtful, leaders lying, sputum sprays and virus splatters. Spell three, COVID grins secretly spreading. Dead Chinese, dead Italians, dead Spaniards, dead Americans, dead silence. The old man stopped breathing and there's still no vaccine. Sniffle, snuffle, cough and splutter, sputum sprays and virus splatters. What is a cauldron but a glorified pot? Bubble, bubble, burble, gurgle, double bubble, hubba bubba. Chew, but don't spit. Clorox, wipe it. Don't touch your face. Don't kiss your wife. No touchdowns, no stealing base. Don't hug the clown. Don't frown. If all we have left is this virtual space, then fly me to the moon. Sinatra me until the moonshine kicks in. Kick the door in. Break the spell, break a leg, break a wishbone, hit the brakes. Don't hit the skids, kids. There's something sticky in the pot, sanitize it. Buy up all the crap. Sell it back for thrice the price. All right, thank you, Katie. Thanks for the hand applause. Electronically, that's groovy. Katie, let's go right to uh, the cutouts, or do you want to go to the revised rhymes? No, let's keep going. Okay. COVID cutout. A cutout poem is a poem that's... Uh, comprised of lines that I, I found in headlines that I cut out and compiled them into a, a new creation. COVID cutout. Of the patients, by the patients, for the patients who died, the average age was 81, with or without treatment, effectively fast-tracking the old malaria drug hydroxychloroquine. Members of a private club insist the term Chinese virus of the racists, by the racists, for the racist, is racist, is not racist at all. Well, right now, right now, avoid non-essential social racism. It's much more aggressive and more people will die, more than anything in recent history. We've done a great job, the president said. Cut it out, COVID. We've done a great job, the president said. Off with his head or soon we'll all be dead. Don't try to say this is a hoax. Don't try this at home, folks. Old folks stuck in bed, barely breathing. This could be the end, friend. First, fire and famine always. Now this pestilence of ranting resistors. Don't listen, kitten. There's a street in my neighborhood named Locust. Hocus pocus, joke us, but don't croak us. Hate is here to stay. Don't second guess us. The post truth tells lies, breeds flies. More nothings than anything in this story. Fake news, fork you. We're setting the precedent. All right, thank you, Katie. And again, if you guys have questions, put them in the chat. Revised rhymes for the quarantine. A tisket, a tasket, COVID put me in a casket. Little Jack Horner sips slump, sits slumped in his corner. Little Bo Peep just died in her sleep. Homeless Miss Muffet sat on a bucket, eating some thrown out bread. 
a bite from a spider put COVID inside her, and that's why Miss Muffet's now dead. Fee fi fo fungs, oxygen can't reach my lungs. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. She wipes herself with fleece. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a COVID test kit. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill's still up there coughing. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a COVID cruise that started from this tropic port aboard, aboard this princess cruise. The passengers were quarantined. The crewmen all got sick. They're stranded in the harbor still. We'll watch them till they croak. We'll watch them till they croak. Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer came home, found his family dead. We all live in a COVID quarantine. COVID quarantine. COVID quarantine. Do you see what I see during quarantine? Said the tip jar to the barista. Do you see what I see? On every street corner, barista. Do you see what I see? Starbucks is closed. Dark all day, dark all night. Not a cappuccino in sight. Not a cappuccino in sight said the barista to her landlord. Do you hear what I hear? Nothing in my wallet, landlord. Do you hear what I hear? I am broke. I am broke. I have no money. I don't know how I'm going to eat. I don't know how I'm going to eat, said the landlord's wife to COVID-19. Do you know what I know? in his lungs, oh mighty COVID-19. Do you know what I know? He'll die, he'll die. I'll shiver in the cold. No use, all his silver and gold. No use, all his silver and gold. Mm. I didn't know you were going to sing those, Johnny, or I would have practiced and sang mine too. <laughs> Well, I got to thank the people at Moreno Valley United Methodist Church for letting me sing in their choir for a little bit. And it's helped me a lot. So, All right. So what shall we read next? I think we need to hear about some love. So some love. Okay. So I'm going to go to Love 19. Son of SARS with pedigree of pestilence, death deliverer, equal curse to Spanish princess and American pauper deceiver of dunces and torment to travelers. You roam cureless and take my breath away. I love your microscopic red spikes and ivory orb. I'd like to make lollipops in your image, puffy cupcakes and tattoos too. I quarantine but await your arrival. My tongue is your red carpet. Please enter, floating contagion, silent slayer, my beloved. Should I start a fan club? Just a cough or sneeze makes me delirious for more news about you. CNN, Twitter, Facebook, Time. Tell me everything. Where were you born? Who's your favorite all-time victim? What's with you and really old people? If you could be any plague in history, what would it be? I'm infatuated. I'm afraid you're driving me crazy. You roam cureless and take my breath away. Love in the time of COVID. Great. Two would-be lovers approach, sit at opposite ends of a park bench, exchange sultry glances. The bench is not quite six feet long, but they're feeling adventuresome today. From behind their surgical masks, they converse. They can each see the outlines of the other's lips moving and soon they are both so turned on that they don't, that they don their surgical gloves and scoot as close as they dare. To touch rubber, to rubber. She flips her hair. He pulls up his socks. Then both embarrassed 
reach for their Purell. That's a very sanitary poem. Thank you. Okay. And these are all from our book, Slow mm -hmm. Unraveling of Living Ghosts. And thanks again to the Moreno Valley Library for their author's expo and letting us read. Yes. My next poem will be Elemental. This is a morning to grieve, both bone and flesh, fiery and fearful. The earth slows its vibrations, not as many people moving. This is a time for slow reckoning, stalking hunched neighbors from the porch as the ponderous April rains abandon their dead in cold puddles and the last breaths of the doomed marry the moans of the stricken. This is a morning to grieve, not as many people moving. Elegy for the Beloved Stranger. Not as many people moving, no passers-by, no cars, no buses. This is a morning to grieve. Coffins for the dead, coffee for the living. No coffins, body bags for the virus laden. Not many people moving. Morgues filled to overflowing. Bodies on ice pile up in box trucks. This is a morning to grieve. We navigate the television, roving remotely. This virus a lit fuse. Still, not many people moving. The dead may yet outnumber the living. If through inaction we fail, there will be no excuse. This is a morning to grieve. All of those who were not worth saving. Refugees, homeless, prisoners, us. Not as many people moving. This is a morning to grieve. Bodies. When a body meets a body stuffed inside a morgue, all who are not worth saving. Can a body fit more bodies underneath the floor? When a body leaves a body lying in the street, all the poor always with us. Won't somebody, anybody, take it to the morgue? When a body finds some bodies at a rehab home, all ventilated elders, can a body bag more bodies at the hospice door? When a body meets nobody, all of us inside a quarantine of distance. Pacing bodies, lonely bodies, searching cures.org. When a body's antibodies show us who got well, later testing positive. Can a body, mind or body, suffer anymore? When a body births a body from within a coma, all can still find joy. Even when a body reads of bodies stuffed inside a morgue, let a body kiss a body. Breath has come once more. Hmm. Thanks. I can see the hand claps and that's very cool. Yeah. I know we've got some questions in there. Should we stop? Let's stop and answer them then. Should we answer a couple first? Sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, scrolling back through, we've got some compliments on your singing, Johnny. <laughs> and Gail Wesson says, clever prince, princess reference and in song. Did you discuss early on the idea to write and respond? Second, write, use the thread of the first to launch another poem. So I guess to answer Gail's question, we didn't set out to do this initially. We just started writing, but we did, um, you know, take something from the person's first poem and incorporate that into the next. So there is a thread connecting each of the poems throughout. So we didn't know what we were actually going to do until we did it, but that is how it turned out. Yeah, sometimes somehow they worked out very uh, well together. They were very complimentary. And uh, I don't mean like complimentary as in praises. And each time Katie would send a poem, I was surprised at how well it, it, it fit in with what I was working on. 
So it was a, a, a very nice surprise. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, now Kenny asks, would we change anything if this book were written today? Well, I do have the one poem that gives the death counts, and I would update that. But beyond that, I think I would stick with uh, these poems as they are. I think it came out very nicely. I was, I was very pleased with it. Very impressed with Katie's work and, and Steve's illustrations. Likewise. Let me, can you show one of Steve's illustrations, Katie? Yes. Yeah, so here, let me pull one up. Um, so this one is titled Filtered. And, you know, of course, it's, it's an exaggeration of a mask. But Steve used some of the imagery from the poems to guide the illustrations. And I think in answer of to what um, that question about, would we change anything? When we wrote these poems, I was really concerned that, you know, by fall or by the time the book came out, that they would be dated, that they would no longer be relevant. And actually, I'm, I'm sorry to say that they feel more relevant today than they did even in the beginning, that we are no further along than we were in March, except the numbers have grown exponentially. Let me see, I'll show you one more of Steve's illustrations. And Steve is with us today. This one is shopping. So this is an um, re-envisioning of what it might look like if we were to go to the store. And, you know, it's not so different from those face shields that some people are wearing, and the booties. And so I think Steve was very prescient in his uh, illustrating. Let's see, one more, here we go. And this one is masked. So thanks, Steve, for, for taking our poems and interpreting them in art. So what shall we read next? Uh, let's go to, uh, why don't you read You Scream, We All Scream, and then at some point we should tell them where they can get these books. Sure. So let's read a couple more and then we can tell them um, how they can get copies and then also... Um, we can answer any more questions because I think we just have a few more minutes. Yeah, we, I think we're okay on time. Let's okay. All right. So, and just a little bit of backstory. Johnny's actually came first, but when we ordered them in the book, it made sense to put them in the other, other order. So in the book, they, mine comes first. You scream. We all scream. The ice cream truck rolls by playing green sleeves. What a heavy load you are carrying, ice cream man. How to support your family during a pandemic famine with nothing more than ice cream ferried in a van. No children chase after you today. Your truck plays and replays like a roving music box as you circle the park and wait. How will you buy your produce, ice cream man? A family cannot subsist on sweets alone. Some people want to open back up, want us to suck it up. Ice cream man, no offense, but as, as much as I'd like a creamsicle, I'm still scared of what stowaways you may be carrying. The bottom line, ice cream man, is I'm afraid. What child is this whose mother sings him a lullaby to cover the song of the ice cream truck rolling by? Thank you, Katie. Cold comfort. I know what you're really carrying, ice cream man. Your truck constantly playing Pop Goes the Weasel. Damn you. You and your big sticks and fudge sickles and snow cones. Your pretend promise of COVID comfort on a sweet stick. I know what you're really chilling, ice cream man. Pop go the bodies. Pop go the corpses. Pop, pop, pop you weasel as you drive in and out of the senior trailer park the morgues are full but there's room in your truck 
You're with the government, aren't you, ice cream man? Keeping the body counts low, hiding the true toll of this crazy pandemic. Thank God I'm still sane. But I finally figured you out. At two Sunday? All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. All around the mulberry bush, shelter, shelter, shelter. All right, we've got about four minutes in looking. I wanted to answer uh, Cindy yeah. Finkelstein's question. Yeah. Um, she writes, some people don't like to talk about difficult subjects, often avoiding things that cause them to feel certain emotions. But I feel it is important to reflect and remember. Did you hesitate as an artist in your reflections? Uh, the reason I like that question is, is because, yes, I did. Um, I'm often... Uh, shocked and sometimes unnerved by what comes out in my poems but um i feel like i can't censor it i just need to go with it even though it's not comfortable and maybe something i'd rather the people from church or my wife may not know that i'm thinking but it's just we we really set out to document the early days of this pandemic so i i, I couldn't uh, censor myself and i think alan ginsburg once said first thought best thought and uh I agree there. So even when certain parts embarrass me, I stuck with them. How about you, Katie? Um, it is always difficult to write about uncomfortable topics. Um, I didn't censor myself, but I'm also not necessarily totally in alignment with the Ginsburg quote. Um, I sometimes do rethink things totally and cut out things that might embarrass me or otherwise don't live up to my own expectations of my work. But um, I, it did, it, in writing all of these through those early weeks of the pandemic um, was a, a release valve. It was a, a one way we were able to um, cope or process what was going on all around us. Um, and I did see an earlier comment from Gail um, asking, did either of us know someone who died or became quite ill with COVID? Um, and did that influence our voice and tone? Uh, yes, I've, I've lost track of the number of people that I've known with it, both, you know, locally, um, I've known at least, we, I had one very close family member, family friend who I've known since I was a girl. Um, she lives in Pasadena. She got deathly ill and she recovered. So that is great. She's in her eighties. Um, and, and I've known a bunch of people in their thirties who've gotten it. One uh, teenager, who's two teenagers who've gotten it. Um, so it, it has been very stressful and you always wonder who's going to be next. And I know I heard about a lot of people in the neighborhood from the Moreno Valley Elks Lodge and also from the Moreno Valley United Methodist Church prayer chain. And uh, it seemed like the virus was getting closer and closer. Um, I haven't had anybody close yet that's caught it, thank God. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, let's, let's read one more poem, Katie. Okay. Uh, if you could read measures and I'll read letter to self. Okay. Measures. I measure my weeks at home in missed salon appointments, invisible gray at my roots, in days between bothering to shave my legs. I miss salon appointments. No armor of gel, my nails tear. It's a bother to shave my legs. Why should I? I'm not going anywhere. No armor of gel, my nails wear. Beat up on breaking down boxes. On lockdown, I can't go anywhere and instead turn to internet shopping. Beat up boxes line the foyer, split ends, Frizz for hair, sans lipstick. I turn to the Instacart essential worker on my porch, smile beneath my mask. 
She splits her time to make ends meet between Instacart and Uber, she tells me, as we smilingly dance on my porch. She dropping, I lifting bags into the foyer. Between Instacart, Amazon, and eBay, I manage to find what I need, sort and wipe it clean on the foyer floor, disinfectant a necessity. All in all, I manage my needs. My hair is even growing on me. When vigilance is no longer necessary, maybe I'll go back to the salon. My grown out hair is growing on me, even with the visible gray at my roots. Maybe one day I'll go back to the salon. Meanwhile, it measures my weeks at home. Great imagery, Katie, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, my last poem is called Letter to Self. Dear Johnny, life is a slow unraveling of shocks and surprises. Cherish yourself, smile again. Stop worrying about more friends dying. Joys bloom boldly, but wither at the end. Life seeds all gardens with grins and grimaces. Cherish both. Get out of the house more often. The corruption of COVID can never be unknotted. Stop waiting for dinner, dancing, and movies. Johnny, you must walk to the park more often. You must fish at the pond at the top of the hill. Move beyond your contingency plans. Remove your mask and love again. Three dogs howl, but no one listens. Always a breeze comes later. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, having Katie, us. And Katie, can you tell folks how they can get copies of the book, please? Sure. I just um, posted something in the chat. We're, we are selling them for $10 each. All proceeds go back into Inlandia's publication program. The books were produced as part of our spring fundraising campaign, and they are limited edition. So when they're gone, they're gone. Um, so just send me an email if you would like a copy and I will get one mailed out to you. I make a UPS run on Monday mornings. So once a week, <laughs> um, get there right when they open. So if you want a copy, let me know and I'll get one out in the mail to you on Monday. So. All right, thank well, you thank you, everybody. Yeah. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> All right, are there any more questions or comments? I'm not really sure what happened with my name going on there. Anyway, <laughs> that was really great. I mean, oh, I mean, to just, um, have, it's like a, di a, a pandemic diary almost in, in poetry. So thank you again, J uh, Johnny and Katie. Thanks to everyone in the audience for being here. And this marks the conclusion of the Moreno Valley Writers Expo in 2020. So thanks so much for all of you who participated to make this event a, a success. And uh, most of the author sessions will be uploaded on the Moreno Valley Public Library's YouTube page. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you missed some of the sessions, have a great day, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Thank you, and thank you, everybody. Thank you.